Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here to start a new video in which we're playing as everyone's favorite Austin Warlord, uh, Yakun. The outbreak of a bloody civil war in Austin has struck fear into the hearts of its many inhabitants. Many men have picked up their rifles with shaking hands, hoping against all hope for the swift resolution to this conflict. The same cannot be said for Friedrich Yakun, the leader of the double S in Austin. Yakun has wrought a much fury in both Stalak and the Russia's camps by cutting off communications and covertly gathering its forces. After much inaction, he has finally broken his self-imposed vow of silence and declared war against both sides of the Civil War. In a grand speech with many uh, double-ass followers, Yakun declared both Stalak and Drescher to be traitors to the national daddy's cause. Human scum deserve to be hanged high for the treason alongside their friends and families after praising the double H dude and the insane system imposed onto Burgundy. Yakun stated his desire for complete control of Austin no matter the cost. The double S's fiefdom in the South has finally broken away, and the future of the Civil War is left to look to be bloodier than ever. Than ever. You will play from Yakun now on? Cool. Totally not trying to get this guy by double uh, stacking down. So now we're playing as Mr. Cool Sunglasses. If you want to about him, please go right ahead. Very nice. I love his glasses. And the Burgundian system. Nothing like it. Alright. A dark son of an awesome. Austin is diseased. This beautiful land, once destined to become the model state of Germanization, has atrophied into chaos and degeneracy. Politicians, officers, subhuman politicians, all festive within its body, spreading the corruption and filth. The great savior of Friedrich Jacqueline must use everything at his disposal to claw the way to victory, resurrect the true ideals of da national daddyism, and secure this nation for generations of aliens to come. The dark sun has risen, and its shadow shall begin the great purge. Anti partisan experience. More attrition, more attack. That's not bad. Another crusade. Ooh. Um, let's grab that first, because it looks like we could really use some manpower. Whether the Baltics are infested with idolatrous pagans or subhuman scum, only the German is fit to purge the land of its filth, just as the Knights of the Teutonic Order fought valiantly all those centuries ago. So must the double S rally the noble cause of purification. By evoking the glorious past of the German Order, Yakon wishes to rally his brethren and embark upon a new northern crusade, one that will bear witness to the eradication of traitors and ultimation alike. Alright, so I haven't tried this out yet. Let's see, who do we have here? I'm going to put you separately, and actually you do this. Somewhat separately, not really, but whatever. Um, yeah. Friedrich, thank you. Nikolaus, you have the most attack here, probably, and at least most defense for here. And we have no for defense. Okay, three. Adolf Axe. Thank you. At this point, we're just going to defend Duneberg. There you go. No factories, eh? Not ideal. Uh, reinforcements go. Uh, I can go low. Supply trucks go medium. Reinforcements high. Garrisons high. Operations are okay. Division that we're using. Um, we're using some decommission stuff here. That's fine. You know, just show me everything you got. I mean, I'd rather see that. So we are using currently what? That's 18 count with military police is not terrible. This is a little better though. Um, I want to see infantry division template 2 is probably what we really want to use. Oh, we can't change out of this. God dang it. Well, whatever. It'll be what it'll be. I'm going to be offensive. Of course, then again, we didn't see what the motorized was like as well. Um, it's these guys are infantry. These guys are not bad. That's not bad. Ah. There you go. Do we have any planes at all? No, we don't. It's unfortunate. Things are exploding more around us. As long as we can hold, if we can, I don't mind taking out these guys first, potentially. Oh, blood and soil. In the light of the morning sun stood black columns of uniform men. British Yakon surveyed his troops from the balcony, a grand master absorbing the glory of his brave knights. The philosophy of the Jewish rat Karl Marx was just as disgustingly asinine as his economics, but within the filth of his lies, he had a nugget of truth, history didn't repeat itself, although not as farce. There was nothing farcical about the war that had erupted throughout the Baltic lands. Uh, two decades ago, the thick red blood of German martyrs had watered this fertile soil to ensure its conquest. The tides roll back and forth, the sun and moon rise and fall, and once more does this land create the blood of the German. Yakon caressed his pistol in his holster with a smile. With knives and guns shall the new fertilization of Austin commence. <coughs> the corrupt Stalak and the cowardly Drescher, the scheming Vitushka and the traitors, Mile Unrat. The filthy right Kovner with his inhuman sycophants, burning Aryan men and defiling Aryan women, ensconced within the great barrel drum of Austin, craven 
Craven kleptocrats and inhuman partisans look alike crashed together in violent discordance. As Yakondo looked over the shoot-stifled troops with a growing sense of pride, he knew that fate had tempered. These men throughout the years had become the saviors of us, and he raised his hand to salute to Heil Hitler, Himmler, the last great standard bearer of national social thought, and felt a rush of ecstasy as the black mass saluted back in unison. Hickon's speech began, The dark days of yours shall any proclaim through. Great determination and might, Austin shall become the model Aryan state under the watchful eye of the Burgundian system. There will be no tolerance for corruption, no mercy for partisans, and no place for intervention. Hickon had lifted fate's gauntlet and heralded the inevitable purification of Austin. No one would stand in the way. He is risen. A call to arms. Redemptive labor. Ooh. You know, probably use some equipment, though. Before his troops, Yako makes grand speeches to inspire those loyal to his cause. Behind closed doors, he negotiates and conspires to strengthen his position. Yako's connection to the slave industry in Duneberg will ensure his forces to acquire the weapons they need to stay slay the enemy without mercy. It's only fitting that our treacherous ex enemies be executed with weapons forged by the subhuman hands they relied on so much. Mm. Four infantry battalion is probably best. Yeah. Just in case. Wait for them to explode. See if we can just like hold the line and go up this way, so. Ah. So now we're all at war. Oh great. Yeah, we don't even have any divisions to spare. We actually don't have enough divisions on the front line as is. Which is not a good thing. Yeah, that'd be difficult to go through. Oh, you would actually come up. So can you just like take stuff from these guys? The UPO joins the war. We're about that. Please go right ahead. You just go right there. And why are you going so slowly? Holy crap. Horse, mud, infrastructure. Jesus Christ, so bad. And who cares about that stuff? Jakob Stop. The Villain Rising. You're about that. Please go right as well. Actually, I don't think, have I played you yet? No, I've not. Ah, they do exist, don't they? Good to know. No more collaboration. If you want to know about that, please go as well. Let the Jews and the enemies kill themselves. Take out the north. Maybe. And then focus on one front. One front. That is what we want to focus on. Oh, look at that lag. It's probably Muscovine that's exploding like normal. Always is Muscovine exploding like normal. There we go. Okay. So you guys find us there. The good old Burgundian system. bad either. Actually, you just stay there for now. You could potentially make some encirclements, too. That'd be great. But we'll see. Because there's a chance we will ourselves get encircled. Ah, factory's fine. Guns. Yeah, and auto-saving. Lag. Um, after guns, we want some anti-tank we will need. We will need some artillery, some support equipment. Uh, training's not really too much. We're going to need some of this, too. We will need, probably not these two, maybe main battle tank, yes. Maybe some cowboys, too, if we really feel like it this year. Go in here, we can circle all those guys. It'll be great. Right there. Redemptive labor, call to arms. Totten Kopf speed. Let's do anti partisan experience because we need more attack. As if even parasites, or uh, parasites, poor partisans, fawning in Kovner's shadow have caused chaos for Aloza's administration for over two decades. They may call themselves soldiers now, but Kovner's men continue to wage a guerrilla warfare they've trained for so long. Now, fuel with the hopeless ambition of total dominance, their threat has increased exponentially, fortunately, for Yakon's black ranks. It's time the Waffen SS Totten Kopf division taught him the harshest of anti partisan tactics, which will be imperative in crushing enemies both within and without. Nice. Them kill each other. Oh, come on. Mm. 
You guys hold the line down there. Yeah, I don't think there's any point. There was a comment in another video saying whether we should, like, like, play as a general government of Poland, but I don't really think there is. There's really not much there. Let's go right there. God dang it, are you kidding me? So be it. Come on. Come on. Don't let him move. One of you guys has to win here. If you don't want to win there, then we're going to attack right here. Everyone's going to get right here. And you're going to force the attack. It's either one of those two. You got to win. Go in, 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 in. Come on. Or doing it bad, doing it bad. Why we need actually fifty percent more attack? There we go. Kill them all off. Oh, uh, more a supply consumption is very not good. Uh, division attack in core territory. Rule of lair. And this is not core territory, which is not good. So, against all traitors. Ooh, a color arms. Like the Aryan child that shoots Doppel was at first a curious, headstrong, and courageous cult reacher. Like the Aryan teenager, war and conquest strengthened it into a hard and stoic and indomitable beast. Like the Aryan man, its lust for victory and land is matched only by the desire to protect its seed. To purify us and yuck almost unite all available SS men to this righteous cause. The time has come to rally the black banners. They will perish. They have to perish. Good. Their special forces are no match. Good. The North will be pacified. Due to insufficient garrison. Eh? Can we just convert these to like militia? We'll need way less, so. Good. Head to there, we'll destroy those divisions. Keep holding the line if possible. If not, well, we'll just keep destroying more divisions then. We got ten men. Hmm. Ah, oh, destroyed. Good. Not bad. How many men have we lost so far? 3,000 versus 34,000, 42,000. Oh, that's good so far. Quite good. Help them out just in case, and it's over river, which is very bad. Good. Militia must die. It was very costly. We've done a very good job so far. Call the arms. Untermensch? Yes. The general Jew has returned. The Untermensch has risen. The dark forces of these kikes and Slavs sweep across Austin like a cancer, ravaging everything they touch. Our noble efforts to cleanse Europe of such filth were too weak. As long as Yakon's strength follows, flows strongly through every SS warrior, the warlords Kovna and Vitushka will never reclaim their people's perverse mantle of power over Europe. These rats will be driven out or burned out, begging for mercy all the way, and we will show them none. Of course, none. Well, they deserve none. Terror's looking actually okay. Of course, we have spent all that army XP on trying to keep down resistance and whatnot. But it is what it is. Let's get our men on the border first. And, and, and if anything, we're going to capture Riga. No. Yeah. 
Could use more factories. Make a whole three guns a day. Good. Very good. Oh, they do have some tanks, though. It's not good. Recapture of Riga will be ours. Good. More energy. Hey, another uh, production unit. Very good. No stability, but whatever. Against traitors, cutting and avarice is within the Jews' nature. An uncultured idiocy infects the Slav, but those of German blood do defile the tents of national socialism of the greatest evil. Race traitors were once thrown into camps, now they get fat in the ivory towers while Slavs steal German work and partisans run rampant. Stalak and Drush are two sides of the same corrupt coin, and every second they proudly display the swastika as a further, se further second of agony, which inflicted on them for despoiling this land. Jakob shot, I want Jakob shot badly. And if anything, you're attacking here. Well, uh, wouldn't do us any disservice right now, too. Let's go look and see. Uh, we really need to take this tile for more supply. I'll make sure we have enough throw supply up through here, so if we could. Eventually push them over the river, that'd be great, but with a tank division here, eh, we'll see. We need to capitulate some putting some more supplies and such. Good. Where are these two? Ah! Very good. Just in time to fight tanks. Tank on tank action. How can you not win your they're only militia? See? Obedience unto death. The days grow dark and the evils we face seem insurmountable, but nothing will stop Yako and his men from saving the Aryan race. Only two options face us now victory or death. From this day forth, the warriors of the SS must make a noble vow, like that of the Teutonic Knights of yore, pledging their utmost allegiance to the furious Yako and promising to follow him in his cause unto the heroic deaths. Those who refuse shall have everything taken from them. Which is only fair. It's the only right thing to do. And if they want to leave, more power to them. Oh, are they coming up behind here? Ooh. Be a great opportunity to strike. Good. You can hold out. Good. Ah, broke over the river, basically. Do not lose Riga. If anything, do not lose, lose Riga. We don't have to labor. The slaves in our possession must be a work to the extreme if we're to succeed in this war. The threat of a bullet in the head is a powerful motivation for many slaves, but there are those propelled into higher effort by the power of hope. The term slave labor demoralizes these creatures, and so help them achieve maximum efficiency. Yakon is secreted to be renamed to redemptive labor. For the workers, there will be fatigue and pain and death, but after all, through redemption, all things are possible. Huh. There's no way over a river they can take two divisions to destroy us. Especially if they're fighting into uh, bunkers. There is literally no way. No, no you ding dongs, go this way. Alright. These guys are very weak. And we must strike when we can. You are not allowed to lose. You will not lose. Ah, forcing the attack. Good. Let them. They threw more militia, huh? It's fine. All right. 
Let's make sure that we convert all these to just straight up light infantry so we don't have to use any any sort of anti-tank here. Oh, just guns, just guns. That's all we need here. Makes up here a little weaker, but whatever. How do they? What? No. Oh, we got him. Okay, at the first, that's not, what's going on? What, how do we not get him? That should help us with supply, right? No? They did not capitulate them. We capitulated them. We deserve to get all the funds, or the, you know, not the funds, but you know, the goods from them. If anything, strike them now. Strike them while they're so weak. anything and circle this god awful division you're not leaving you are by god you are definitely not leaving how many times have I said it you will not leave You will die in your place. There we go. See? You may stop. You may stop. These guys may not stop. All right. Smuggling from the West. No number of weapons are enough to satiate the hunger of the Civil War. Connections are as powerful tools in times such as these, and none are more lo as loyal as SS in Germany. With assistance in the West, Yakon shall smuggle more arms into the territory and deliver the gift to those forces who need it the most. anti yakon propaganda will spew what it may, but her movement was not so isolated after all. Take everything from them. Everything. Keep these guys in place. Ah. So good. Do the front lines first. Let them kill each other as much as possible. No, 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 no. You're not going to win here. If anything, we're going to cut these guys off. Limb by limb. As long as the autosave doesn't kill me first. Could you do the distraction? Maybe? No? Okay. How many divisions does this god dang guy have? 20, up to 23? Jesus Christ. Bunch of OP pieces of garbage. Straight in. Destroy everything they got there. And then, something called speed. Victory must be secured rapidly and brutally. Before Austin's final flame of hope is snuffed out forevermore, training will commence to transform Yekon's men into warriors of speed. Just as the Totenkopf have been in the days of the Second Valkyrie, the SS divisions must be swift as a coursing river to spread their might across the land, and only one word should scream in their heads as they march onwards. Faster. Oh, you want to take stuff from us, huh? We'll see how you do, then. They've pretty much given up attacking us. This is stupid. They're giving up attacking the enemies instead of us, I should say. They must have tons of equipment. Tons and tons and tons of equipment if they're able to attack us like this. Get Cowan. Good. Go south, go south, go south. Ah, cut off. Beautiful. Their greed will be the downfall. Nah, yeah, ain't frown. Frown, no. Greedy, greedy little traitors. Fourteen thousand losses. Oh, so sad. How do we lose so much production? Ah, stupid buildings. For the civilian population or whatever. Smuggling from the bus, don't go speed. Yep. 
They want it like this. We're gonna go in. And you're gonna force the attack. Because if we can break through here... Oh, you can just go this way. Or go through there. This will do very well. I love Yakun. How can you not break these guys? Yeah, they're definitely not killing each other. They're just killing us. And this is stupid. Come on, break them, you pieces of garbage. Come on. Now they open it up? That's so stupid. Yeah, I, I kind of hate this. I mean, parts of it is just incredibly stupid. Incredibly, 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 incredibly stupid. But whatever. You know, what the devs want. What the crap is this? Are you kidding me? Force it, force it again. I don't care. Force it again. Yeah, this is stupid. This is incredibly stupidly made. Oh my goodness. This has been made in such an incredibly stupid way. Holy crap, but from the wolves later. A single rodent can be hampered, stabbed, and even shot in order to wipe out an entire mischief of rats. One must another to reliability of poison. Chemical warfare is not just necessary, but justified in sucking the life from our enemies from with speed and effectiveness. There will be inevitable strife within the ranks of such drastic measures, but their cowardice will not infringe on our desire of victory. The enemies of Yuckland are little more than vermin, and so they should be treated as little more than vermin. This was incredibly stupid. Are you kidding me? Are you flipping kidding me? We just we lost a tank division because of the stupid stupidity of the devs. I'm sorry, devs, but like, this is stupid, and not not the, uh, not the TNO devs. Well, part of the TNO devs, yeah, but the uh, paradox devs. Yeah, infinite manpower for this group. It must be super easy. Matt Landrot's super easy to play as. Old guard support. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Tell me you're biased without telling me you're biased. Only focuses us and gets insane buffs. I mean, our buffs are, are not bad, but they're not insane. 50% attack is pretty decent, but it's not as insane as 20% attack and defense. Are you kidding me? Yeah, infinite manpower, infinite strength for these guys. Yeah, uh -huh. sure, sure. Come on. Uh, you know, like, attack and you know they got more attack, which makes sense. At the same time, though, they don't get any extra attack. Infinite equipment for them. Wolf's Lair by Oren Yakon. Hours of intense discussion and debate have broken out between Yakon and his most trusted officers. The cause must be strengthened by enemies necessary. Less victory is to be snatched from our grasp. The solution is just but simple. Two orders will be sent out to all fighting men, and with these or orders shall come victory everlasting. No mercy, no surrender. Why don't we get any more benefits? More buffs. More benefits, buffs. It makes no sense. It literally makes no sense. If anything, if you want to give a group more manpower, or, you know, more, more numbers, they can't be that strong. They really can't. I mean, we're probably relatively bloated as well, but still, come on. Go in. Thousand artillery pieces, eh? I hate that we can't edit these divisions, can we? Oh, no, at least we can edit them now, which is good. Good. And again, can we convert these guys? There you go. This was that. We got enough, enough guns, though. That's good, though. Enough artillery. Enough anti-tank. All those guys are going to be the same type of template, which is good right here. Um, go big, go home.
Now let's see, military engineering, let's grab some of that. No. 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 Really concentrating on eliminating as much manpower as possible right now. They won't destroy us and we'll destroy them and we'll make it easy for them. Don't know it's going to be a frontline city very soon. I should just go in. Oh, you don't want to lose your capital city? Tough. Um, you know, just hang out for now. Hang out. Oh, it wasn't your capital city, huh? It's close. Very close. Victory or death. Every single day of the Civil War raged on was another day of failure, and every single day of this failure made itself known in the very air. Friedrich Jacob could taste it. He scribbled in furious silence, listening to his most trusted lieutenant deliver the latest battlefield reports. Wolf Walter Schroeder stood over Superior with crossed arms, his furrow brow, or his furrow brows, and pouted lips frozen as he awaited a response. Finally, Jacob glanced up upwards and thrusted a clump of papers in the main, in a man's arms. And surely these two words are sent to my top journals at once. Jacob embarked, grabbing more paper and scrawling intensely. He couldn't remember the last time he'd slept, and it's time to struggle. Rust was a reprieve, fit only for the craven and weak. But when I gave you concerns of status of prisoners, we shall take no more. Anyone captured will be executed on the spot. They are a waste of time and resources and only slows down. What is your other order? Shorter queried after a few moments of silence. Victory or death, Volta. Victory or death. No compromise, no concessions. None of my men shall be captured alive. Any soldier in such a position must shoot themselves or choke upon a cyanide pill. If this is not possible, then they must slit their own throats. If their knife is lost, they will find the nearest effing rock and shove it through their eyes if they have to. The left blood of a martyr shall turn the soul as red as a uh, blutfan. We proudly display upon our arms. If it is our just cause to die, then so shall we. There was no time for half measures. If they faltered now, all would be lost. Instead, they stood firm and true, willing to do what must be done. And then the Civil War's great tide of blood and ash would sweep Yakul and hide of the leadership of us and perhaps beyond. The greatness awaits us all. No mercy. We are not. We are men of action. We are men of terror. We are not and will never be men of mercy. As the war rages on, every soldier must remember their duty to kill every foe in sight. We shall end their miserable lives and continue the march to glory. We shall take no prisoners. We shall feel no remorse. Our heads must be hard and our hearts must be cold. Well, only then shall we overcome. No surrender. Until this conflict is ended, not a single man shall lay his weapon down upon the soil. To bow one's head in shame and raise one's arms in capitulation is to betray the Aryan race itself. No man shall surrender, no man shall yield. If defeat and capture is inevitable, then it is the duty of every man in such a position to take his own to take his own life. Victory or death awaits us all, nothing in between. Literally nothing in between. That's a strong, it's not bad. That's very strong. Guarantee land rights? That's very strong. Plus ten percent of deficient defense on core territory? Jesus Christ. Guaranteed social rights? This would be so easy to play as with extra or attack, defense, organization, six percent more people population. Jesus Christ! You're just basically giving it to them for free. Right here. And they do that. Which is we'll go here. I kind of doubt we can do anything here, can we? Oh, I was wrong. If we get any more divisions, that'd be great. Going 25 manpower though. Ah. Ah. Oh, we no manpower. How sad. But look at that manpower. Whatever it would be. Oh, it'll come out eventually too. No. A thousand times no, you will perish here like the vermin you are. Jesus Christ. Every single one of them has to die. Jesus. So strong. For no reason. Literally no reason. If anything, these guys should just basically be militia. With a few divisions of, ex of veterans. 48,000 we've lost. For what? Absolutely nothing. Go in. Crush him. Are they abandoning him? Ooh. Oh. Oh boy. Where are you going? You're almost dead anyways as it is, but whatever.
I was wondering why that division was moving. Or scooting by. And appear awesome. At least, at last, Yakun will arrive so they did a glorious concert. He united through blood and soil, the noble knights of the SS have secured victory and brought peace to this fractured land. With the iron grip of the Burgundian system in place, Yakun and his most loyal men shall now begin the grand purification of Austin. Behold, in the east, the pure, perfect Aryan state. If you can move fast enough, we will have no issues. Yeah, talk about overpowered when you don't even have to you take all this stuff and you don't have to, have to suffer any consequences from losing it. Of course you get encircled. Go straight for the capital at this point. Go in. Just go in. Everybody go in. Ah. Oh. Beautiful. A Lundwitz escape. Where did it all go so wrong? The thought pervaded Lundwitz's head as he walked head down to make shift runway. Perhaps it had been when his army broke and falling back over and over again. The students were never the best soldiers in any case. Well, according to the dead, they are. Bad decision after bad decision. And now here he was, leaving on the same transport plane he carried so many others out of the Reich. Perhaps it was when he decided to take on the role of the reformer. He could have kept his head down, made endless amounts of money off slave labor and cheap goods. It would have shredded his soul, of course, but he wouldn't be fleeing Austin like a rat, perhaps. Even when he got into his reformist business in the first place. If he had ever touched politics, never touched it, would he be here today? He'd be somewhere under Stalica, perhaps, or even maybe Dresh, or nothing great, of course, but he would, wouldn't be broken, humiliated, and barely holding on to his life. He'd nearly been shot dead. Escaping his office a few minutes later, he would have been, never made it out. But the time for reconsidering his decisions was long past. The plane rumbled off the tarmac as he gazed out the window, watching the land he'd worked so hard for, for his seat behind him. Perhaps one day, his dream would be achieved. The dream redirected. Hmm. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, but students are not soldiers. Most of them, the vast majority of them, will not be soldiers. And why they're so strong... Sorry, I don't think I can really believe that. Some of them would be. But not a huge amount. No surrender. Force it. Force their deaths. Before we capitulate these guys. No, not bad. You know, yeah, not bad. But they're not good on defense. And that's what matters. Ah! Ah, so close. Good. They will die. They're out of manpower. No factories. Nothing. Shoot them like the scum they are. They can have as many divisions as they want in there. They will not win in the end. Well, my friends, we've done it. The Echo wins in Austin. The Vitish Kazem, the gunfire cracked over Han's head and embedded himself into the wall. He ducked behind around the corner, cursing his luck. These darn Belarusians didn't know what to quit, did they? The schoolmate motioned him back around the corner as he went to work, firing a few short bursts at the target. When the two heard a scream, they pushed up further. The gunfire echoed off the buildings as they marched through, looking for the target. He couldn't be too far away now. Guns at the ready, eyes open for snipers. They slowly made their way down the street, looking for one man and one man only. A door opened on the right. A man in a suit stumbled out. He took one long look at the soldiers and began rushing down the street. Hans raised his rifle and cut him down. Was that him? When the two men reached the body, they turned it over to check the face. Hans held a picture up to the dead man's face. It looked identical, identical to Vitushka, certainly, but was it really him? Hans shrugged and put an extra bullet in the man's head. Vitushka or not, someone was going to pay for dragging him into the sack hole, and it certainly wasn't going to be him. It's out of the way, in any case. And the Eklund wins in Austin. Horrifying news, or great news from Austin today, as Friedrich Jekyll has proclaimed victory in Austin on behalf of Himmler's SS. Many had feared the eventuality, but the knowledge of another nation following the, the great Burgundian system had joined the world is almost too much to bear, for some weak people. Jekyll's SS have already begun tearing down the colony from the inside of it despite, in a desperate battle, against any they deem impure. Already, refugees have told tales of roving bands of SS units, torching entire seas of deemed impurity by, any, by the harsh standards of the Burgundians. Heine Kimmler has made no statement on this publicly, but is doubtlessly pleased with events. The Black Sun's rays spread further. Yeah, I, I would love to see. I'm going to try them out. These other two temp the other two nations I need to play as at the time of this recording. Um, what else I need to play as? You know, like, what else I need to do? 
Like, because that, that seems extremely easy. Plus, 20% more attack, defense, and organization. The Bellow Reason will be a little more difficult to play as, but I'm really interested in seeing what the other, other template would be like. Also, what do we have here? No inflation, at least. Yeah, fair rate, credit rating. And it's October, and we'll finish up the last, last one. No compliance, eh? A little bit of compliance from here to there. A pure Austin. If you win in Austin, it would be interesting if you could like support one side in the Civil War if it was still raging on. Or the Civil War is done here, then you could help out over here. That would be quite interesting to see, but you know. Maybe in the future when the devs are doing stuff, and I do apologize for insulting the devs, but like sometimes this is just infuriating. But I do know that this is all gonna get updated in the future, but you know, in the heat of the moment, I'm just like, my god, parts is not great. Got enough guns though. Need manpower though. Got a couple trains, not bad. A oh, pure awesome, my friends. A oh, pure, pure awesome. Is that it? No events? What? Well, that sucks. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another video. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great three just yakun the rest of your day.